So this is the Weaving the World uh, call on Wednesday, January 5th, 2022. <laughs> Uh, and we're not talking about weaving the world as much as story threading and uh, unfinished 21 and a bunch of stuff that's happening there. Um, so that's so that's the setup. And and if that happened, if that event happened, that would be fantastic. And that got me thinking about a bunch of other things. So I'm, I'm just sort of setting up that conversation because because the 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 message you haven't read yet on the on the uh, OGM list, the end of it says. And by the way, the all singing, all dancing event would have one or more story threaders, would have a graphic facilitator, and would have one or more mavens, think Pete. Um, and, and so, and, and in a perfect world, what the mavens were generating would be fed over to the story threaders and to the graphic facilitators, and the graphic facilitators would link back to the story threaders at the different places where they're facilitating, and all of these would be sort of digitally meshed together and I didn't say into the big fungus, but I hadn't even thought about that. But you know, that's that's where this whole thing would be going, um, and that got me really excited. So, yeah, it's super exciting. Um, uh, at some point soon, um, we should we should sync up with uh, Wendy Elford um, because she and I have done done like the the another part of that which is having running the comp you know running a, a panel actually it was a panel that she she moderated and then we've made a website for it um so i never got a debrief on how that conversation went and you were in it right you were part of that that call or, uh, you know? i was uh i was there for the call but i was i was a uh, an observer an observer yeah not, yeah, yeah. Um, any any feedback on it or um it, the it went really or? well and um wendy's got more to more to say maybe more to ask about kind of um she um uh i you know it's the first first one that that we've done like this and the first thing that she's done like this um for a long long time i think um but uh on reflection she she tried to like steer the conversation and keep people like you know uh, integratively meshed, um, and uh, she felt like she did a pretty good job of that. So, just the the content of the of the the panel was improved by Wendy doing um, uh, key moderation stuff, and then there's a whole bunch of things that we've done and learned about <laughs> turning it into a website. Um, uh, we kind of got started on the whole website thing like a week before, like maybe even less than a week before. Um, so we hired um, a uh, website design firm um, uh, run by a principal and then she farms different parts of it out to, um, to people around the world but um, getting you know getting a, a website design done in a few days over a weekend actually and then and then going oh shoot there's a bunch of Laura Mipsum in different places you know like the call outs and polls quotes and you know and then a few pages um, it's like oh wow somebody's gonna have to write all of that <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so we learned a lot and um, and had had fun, you know. Oh, oh, wow! We have to replace the stock, you know, stock photography with like something real. And right, right. There's a whole bunch of gaps to fill. <clears throat> and then the whole process of we're right now we're in the phase of kind of reviewing how it's coming together with the speakers and with some of the stakeholders. Um, and so, so we and and we built. Um, we built a, I, I built a project tracker um, and it turned out to, to be in Google Sheets rather than Airtable because we were doing it super fast. Um, so anyway, it turned out to be when, when you start doing things, you learn really quickly how many things there are in, in like a simple, oh, because the, the, the first thing was, oh, let's just throw the transcript up on a web page, right? And that sounds like it's a 20 minute task. What could, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Um, I can empathize so much with that, and now Stacy can too. Um, did you did you tr did you try to pitch them on building a wiki instead of a website? Uh, no, um, I'm sure that I'm sure that crossed your mind. Well, we've we've built it um, kind of interestingly. I, you know, the whole pitch was around it, it was around a, a static wiki essentially. Um, the idea was to more or less story thread into the transcript. Um, uh, I'm not sure that we're going to do much of that. I think we'll just publish the transcript. And 
bringing along everybody, the, all the stakeholders in, into, you know, what this could be, um, you know, and why, why they should pay us some more dollars to do that kind of thing. Um, that's, that's a whole nother thing, right? Getting stakeholders bought into the, into more and more like processing of it. So yeah. the thing that we didn't do that sounds, I, so Wendy's already queuing up, um, uh, uh, I, this this was uh, hosted or sponsored. It was actually sponsored by uh, Kinef in um, Australia. Australia, um, and then hosted by I think a blockchain company. And um, so Wendy's already it, it it's it's obviously the first in a series. Um, uh, so you know I, we should all get together and talk about you know, how to continue to do these kinds of things and as a time series. And um, a thing that we didn't do is some kind of any any of the video stuff, right? It's all just, she descripted the whole thing and um, she's made it better. There was a, a heckler that, that came on during the, the uh, conference that uh, she's had to snip out. Um, right. Wow. Um, so you got Zoom bombed. It was, you know, it was one of those things where uh, we had a small audience of, you know, people and, and it seemed like it was a fairly, you know, uh, it's a heart heartfelt topic, you know, water and Australia, oh, right, and, Australia. and civilization and indigenous folks. Yeah. Um, no hot uh, topics there. So the, it was apparently the, the, um, the uh, Aboriginal speaker who was the one who got, you know, heckled. Big surprise um, there, and and it That's was actually so like uh, the 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 heckler didn't heckle vocally. They um, they just uh, had a toilet flushing sound. Um, oh, and and the it, oh, the in, in, the reaction of the the audience was really interesting because it's like well that's weird i don't know what that that is i don't know who's doing that i don't right. know why they're doing that and it was actually chuckles and stuff like that it's yeah. like yeah. nervous chuckles right yeah so anyway oh that's um, fascinating there's a um, in in i think it's james scott book about domination and the arts of resistance um, he talks about ways that you can resist that aren't noticeable, like who did it, right? And yep. he says, well, you know, as the king walks by in the parade, the peasant farts really loudly. Yep. <clears throat> and you can't tell who of the cowtowing peasants yep. is, the, is the farter. Um, so it's a, it's a way of doing something offensive without getting your head lopped off right away. Yep. And, but, in, but in the Zooms, you can sort of tell where the sound comes from. You can sort of tell, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's so interesting. Huh. And that was very passive aggressive too. Very passive aggressive. And it's like, uh, anyway um so anyway okay. uh, you know there was some video editing and stuff like that but right. nothing fancy like um, yeah. value adding to it and it would be fun to do that in in future ones sweet stacy did you have a thought about that are you gonna okay i was uh, so just I, thinking what about if this guy just went to the bathroom and didn't realize he he wasn't muted was, i think that was the the conclusion of a bunch of people it's like oh this is one of those things where i could tell right away mm. it was a sound effect on not <laughs> Because the time, <laughs> well, and the, the sound quality of it, you know, it, it was a recorded toilet flushing. Ah. It wasn't, yeah, yeah. it wasn't any room <laughs> echo or anything. Uh, uh, in a lot of movies, how's this go? There's a famous scream that that audio yeah, engineers the, use. The Wilhelm scream. <clears throat> the Wilhelm scream. So there's there's one scream that dates way, way, way back that is in a lot of movies, um, and gets used over and over again. It's a very strange thing. Actually, we we're both going to look it up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like you know that happens <clears throat> in uh, music too. So here's uh, bop, bop. here's the Wilhelm scream from 1951 from the movie Distant Drums, and then it was uh, used, I guess, at the Charge of Forever for the River. It's a stock sound effect, and it's an inside joke. <clears throat> and I'm forgetting who the Wilhelm is, but I didn't put him in. That's very strange. And you don't have the sound. Uh, I don't have the screen embedded here, which is dumb. I kind of should, should not. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll have to fix that. I'll have to fix that. Um, right. And so, Pete, I have a follow-on question, <clears throat> which, which is just a lingering question always in the back of my head, uh, which is, I'm going to say one word and just for your reaction, mavenology. It's a, it's a good word. <laughs> I mean, should it exist? Are you interested? I know you. I know you like fully committed to the gunnels <clears throat> at this point, but but I'd love for there to be like a mavenology practice of some sort. Uh, if it, what if any sort of role would you like to play or anything like that? I mean, 
It feels um, like a thing that ought to exist. <clears throat> I, I, I think I, I've owned like the like reasonable domain names around that for at least a mm. while. Um, oh, good. After you know, after one of your suggestions um, many years ago, um, I'm not sure that I still do. Um, uh, it's a little complexified by the um, uh, by the connection with Mr. Gladwell. Um, who gets kind of you know thumbs up and thumbs down depending on who you're talking to? Okay. Oh, um, you mean you mean people's reaction to his book, like like yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And and Stacy, just to, to fill you in, uh, years ago I said to Pete because Pete is is famous for um, coughing up brilliant, pithy, well presented research on pretty much anything, and on the retreat list like there's sort of a running running joke that you can ask kind of anything and Pete will show up with, oh, well, there's this. <laughs> and, and so I proposed that he start a, a, a guild <clears throat> called Mavenology or a consultancy or a practice or whatever. And then somehow apprentice, ha have a, take apprentices basically because this research function is actually genuinely very important to civilization. And we need lots of them. We don't, we'd like, if we could scrape Pete's skin cells and culture them, that would probably be good too. Um, and so that's, that's the whole idea. It's like, Hey, Isn't Hey, this that just what we were talking about before though. Yes. With, you know, we were in that case, we were talking about story threaders, but again, all these things. Well, and story threaders would be like buddy, buddy with, uh, mavens, yeah. uh, would be buddy, buddy with graphic facilitators would be buddy, buddy with other people. Right. And, and there's probably a couple other trade craft, uh, uh, schools that we can think of that fit nicely together for, more effective thinking together, right? Because because graphic facilitation is an attempt to memorialize a meeting, and it, it yep. it's, it's a thing now. Okay, and that's and that's and that's all we're doing, <laughs> right? And 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 we know that there's like so much more at hand, except it costs money and time and effort. Except it could be, and there's no proof that it is, but there's it could be super valuable. So I'm wondering, like, can we, if we're interested, can we find a, a test bed case? Can we find a conference that's trying to be, trying to do good and, and we'll fund it? Can we, I don't know, I'm interested now. And, and Kevin Jones's reply to me was unexpected and so perfect that I'm like, this would be really, really fun and useful to prototype in the world and directly OGME because the effort, the work, the outputs, everything else would be feeding the big fungus. Like, like really seriously, this, this, the, the whole thing um, smells really good. Great. Okay. This, um, with Mavenology, I, I, I got stuck for a long time, years, uh, uh, since Jay suggested this, like probably a decade ago, maybe even more. Um, I get, I get stuck on wondering if it's actually teachable. I'm not sure that it, I'm still not sure that it's, it is, but that. I, I, halfway through the decade, I was kind of like, yeah, even, even if it's not completely teachable, that it's still, I, I guess, it's advisable. Well, not, so not, I, I don't want to say that. I, <laughs> I don't want to say that I'm a genius at something, but wow. um, it's a little bit like being a, a really good swimmer or a really good uh, piano player, right? There, there are people who are going to like, there are people you just can't ever reach, right? Um, but that doesn't mean that they can't tell you a lot of tips and tricks and, and get you up the curve. And that's right. a valuable thing. So and I, that's and kind I, of where I've ended up. And I, I agree with that. And the feeling I had was, um, first, you would only help people who were already kind of gifted in it, a little bit gifted yeah. and, and leaning in and really eager and anxious to learn more. Okay, good. And then you you could probably take them from 40 to 80. Yeah. Right? And, and, and at 80, most of them would probably tap out or, yeah. or cap out. And, and that would, at 80, they would be highly functioning mavens who could attend and participate yeah. in anything. And then a couple of them would shine brightly uh, and, and would, you know, push beyond and do new things that we're not, we're not even thinking about. And that's really cool because you'd want to, you'd want to be like with them and, 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 and next to that and learning from that as they, as they push ahead. Yep. Yep. Um, so that seemed to be like a dynamic that you'd really like. Yeah. Like and similarly, similarly to your answer to Jerry's brain after Jerry's gone, it's like, the answer is there needs to be a community that's actually learned how to feed my brain, yep. uh, which is kind of what OGM is. Uh, but not yet. Um, similar thing for Mavenology. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. 
all of, all of which is is wishware as 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 often happens here unfortunately um but 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 this is like very tangible stuff right this this is stuff that's practical would be useful we would love to do i mean one of the things that really excited me about kevin saying hey how about story threading this neighborhood economics thing is like okay, I would love to be doing my little brand of jujitsu in that community for those purposes in this way. Like, yeah. like drop me and this nice new little MacBook Pro uh, in that room with some Wi-Fi and let me open my ears and heart as wide as I can and just like be in the flow yep. and, and that will work out. And that, that's a really good thing. And, and Stacey, you were talking earlier about alignment. We were talking about blackmailing yourself. <clears throat> um, and... Uh, one of my favorite talks is Jason Roberts' TEDx talk about better block in which he says, you have to blackmail yourself. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and so, so there we were. Well, the point being that you wouldn't have to blackmail yourself because you'd be in alignment. You'd be, so, al you'd be so aligned. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Kind, of, kind of along that line, I, Wendy already has, has noticed an effect where um she's she's kind of passionate about the you know the water and rivers and stuff in australia and then um and it's a big topic there i think it's it's a little bit bigger than um water in the american west it, it, or it's it's more socially engaged i guess uh, you know it's kind of similar weight of topics um but um there's actually more there's more, more activity around it more, yeah it's it's more broader activity yeah there's you know there's some interesting activity about water in the american west but it's it's pretty narrow you know a bunch of people it's like i don't care i just go turn on the tap and it still works so there's, mo there's mostly in the it. u.s denialism uh, yeah. about it where in, yeah. in australia there's kind of actual work to try to solve yeah. resolve these things yeah so um so wendy ended up finding out um a, a big sticking point um, around what's going on and there's this big injustice <laughs> um, and she's like crap I and she felt called to step into the situation right and so then she's got this weird am I trying to facilitate the conversation or do I really need to participate in the conversation because there's this injustice that needs to get fixed ASAP right um, so it was it was interesting having her bump into that situation and I was you know it's easy for me to say that just means you need to find a champion to do the things, you know, in the content part of it that you need to see done. It doesn't mean that you need to step out of your facilitator role because that's really key, right? So a thing to watch for or a thing to, to think about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Um, so interesting, okay. And, and so watch this space because there's gonna be other events in that series. Yes. Cool. Um, then Stacy got stuck on the Daryl Davis transcript because there was a 10 minute gap in the transcript, uh, somehow. So we're going to solve, I'm going to, I can even do it now, but just go look at the original video, see if there are words there. Cause then it was a copy paste error of some sort, yep. <clears throat> um, and kind of make that whole, but Stacy, do you want to talk? I only a little need bit of... four minutes left because yeah. I did, I did it by ear. I just yeah. started typing. Yep, yep, old school. But at my best, I was only a 45 minute <laughs> typist. So it's going to take a while. So I'd rather get those four minutes. Yeah, thank you. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the act of, of perfecting the transcript and, and stuff like that? Well, I'm sure Pete knows about when, because you even mentioned it, when people jump in and overlap each other. Yeah. So that was a big problem with Jerry and Daryl specifically yeah. <laughs> in particular. And, um, you know, when people talk in run on sentences, that was, that was a really big deal because I was there. I knew like when it was switching over, cause a lot of times yeah. when two people, you know, so, I mm -hmm. mean, look, it's, you do learn by doing, I walked away from this experience more convinced than ever that every CEO should really start in the mailroom. No doubt, that made perfect sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, at New Science, the first tech job I had ever, um, we would have stuffing parties. When the, when the, every two weeks we published an issue of our paid newsletter 
And then we would have a stuffing party where somebody would print out all the labels and we would all gather in our little, our tiny conference room and we would put, put our clients' names on envelopes and then put the issue in the envelopes and then put them in the posted, you know, the Pitney Bows and blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and you got to see all your, all the clients' names and they just, you know, they just, every two weeks they went by <clears throat> and, and we would sit there and chatter and like be happy because phew, the big push to get the issue was done and all that kind of stuff. It was cool. Well, also, if you're a boss and you have expectations for other people, you should know what it actually is they're doing before you say, oh, they're doing it too slow or it's taking too long. It shouldn't take this long. Right. And that disconnect is actually one of the big dysfunctions in the American workplace. I have, I have two stories. One of them is uh, my first startup, actually. Um, uh, it was kind of early days, but not so early that we hadn't actually built some customers. But um, at some point, uh, we had, I don't know, systems or something had, had made it so that we really needed to, to run a bunch of credit cards all at once. <clears throat> and so the whole company got together, you know, all four or five of us or whatever, and was were helping run credit cards. And the, the credit card machine we were using made a, a cool little sound when it actually like, you know, banked the money for you. So it was really engaging. <laughs> um, it was like really ka-ching, like, ka-ching, yeah. Ka-ching. So, you know, it's because you give, you know, if you're in engineering or something like that, you know, you're staring at a screen all day and all night and it's like, it's just a big mess and it doesn't feel real kind of, but, but actually, you know, seeing the credit card things ring up was really effective <clears throat> for the whole team, not That's just great. the finance department. Um, the other story is uh, just recently, um, like two days ago or something like that, uh, one of the delivery companies, I forget if it's DoorDash or Instacart or whatever, but um, they've got a rule that everyone does deliveries. Um, I think one day a month or something like that, or one day every other month, um, everybody in the whole company, right? And so I think the thread started on Twitter when one of the software engineers is like, guys, I make $200,000. I got hired to do coding. I don't know what the F I'm doing running a delivery, right? And a bunch of other people are like, dude, seriously? You get the chance to actually see how the, the sausage is made and you're going to like you know, what, what's up with that? You should just quit, you know, because you're not obviously don't care, you know? So I thought that was a really interesting kind of thread going. And, and there's some company that, that makes everybody, you know, do the, do the sausage, you know? Right. Right. And there's a couple of companies that have that ethos and kind of interesting that I like, cause, cause DoorDash and all these guys are squeezing like people on foot really, 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 really hard. Yeah. So interesting that the squeezing is still happening, even though that's a company policy. Yeah. Just saying. I mean, yeah. one of the one of the problems at General Motors was that all the executives would get a brand new new model GM car every year, and anybody who, as much as men, you know, drove a Toyota car onto the parking lot would be like ridiculed, banished forever, et cetera, et cetera. So, so none of them understood that these very well-built little cars, much smaller, more efficient cars that didn't have an air conditioner that could cool the car from standstill at 100 degrees down to 70 in five minutes, because that was one of their protocols and making up the numbers, like, like th- that wasn't on the Japanese car, just not, not one of the things they thought people needed. Um, they, they were completely blindsided yeah. uh, through, their, through their own culture and arrogance. And and then and then they were building the sh- the Gremlin and the Pacer and the some really bad Buicks and God knows what just horrible stuff that fell apart. The Pinto, remember the Pinto? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I drove across country in a Pinto. Oh, seriously. And and lived to tell the tale. And lived to tell the tale. You should get a T-shirt printed. <laughs> I drove a Pinto across country and I'm still here. <laughs> um, so anyway. Um, they had, they had HECA fit and finish problems too. And, and, you know, all the like quality stuff, the, the American cars had just gotten fat and sloppy. And, and then there was a decade or so where it's like, don't buy Japanese cars. We're American cars. We're better. And it's like. Uh, patriotism <laughs> will solve the problem. What the heck? <laughs> yeah. Just, just buy these shitty cars we're making. Yeah. Cause they're American. Buy yeah. American. And, and, and when we give you, when we sell you the base car, like it's not really fun to drive because it doesn't have wall panels and it doesn't have like a carpet inside. It doesn't have a, it's got like an AM radio that nobody wants anymore. So you're going to have to pay for all these upgrades that are standard in their car, but we don't understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So many things that break, so many things that change. Like, 
Um, anyway. So the missing transcript minutes, it sounds like we don't need to look at that. Uh, well, I, I want to go look at the original YouTube video and see if that transcript has those minutes. See if there was do a gap. Do was, was, there, was there a gap in the original? So talk amongst yourselves for a second. I'm going to mute and, and well, share your screen. And, or, okay. Part, what'd you say? Share your screen. And we'll, we'll eyeball it with you. Sounds great. Uh, so here's the video. Click on it. It's interesting because the brain is running inside Rosetta. There's this little gap. There's, the, there's a so, pause. So I'm to figure out how do you help Can you put in the search? It's because it's when you talk about Diacon. Perfect. So I can go uh, find, oops, I got to move us. There we go. Uh, open transcript. Actually, you're probably better off putting in white right because Diacon was spelled wrong. Right, exactly. Um, and can I search the transcript? Yeah, if you click in it, I, I've had success searching on it. Uh, oh, just click in. Just, just, just click in there and then do Command F. Yeah. Okay. Oh God. <laughs> white right up under the documentary. White right. So it's sixty two forty six. How's that? So then you should be able to click on that timestamp and go there. And okay. Stacey, are you are you trying to we'll not do yourself? That. I did that. Yeah, I'm trying not to exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Dia in my brain. There we go. See, you're off screen already. Keep going. 63. Go. I have all that. I did all that by ear. Okay. Tell um, me when you see. Tell me. Vulnerable. You could see the coin drop right around there. Okay. And perfect. Were, yeah. Right after right. the word drop. Toggle, toggle timestamps. And then so from here to where? Keep going. Keep, 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 keep. Uh, can you say the words that uh, you pick up at? Keep going. I, I. You I have it. to do this is all the part I still have to do. Yeah. I didn't do this. Keep going. Richard Spence. Keep uh, going. You could copy to the end, right? Okay, stop. Now go back up. So um go to the top, scroll a little bit more up. Oh, stop. Um, but unfortunately they don't call us, even though I'm not affected. Right, right around. Put af after their life. After right in here. So stop there. Wait a minute, hold on. Because he repeated himself. So maybe, I, you know, put it in because just in case. So why don't I capture all this? Yeah, keep going. Okay. And I know when he talks about the next part, we're good. So I'm going to go D, I'm going to go D, return it for a second. Since we now know how to do that. And Pete, I had to, I had to do this several times. because yeah, it get, like. Yeah, I didn't get any of this. I had dinner nationalist groups cool let's see there it worked so now i'm going to copy this and paste it into the transcript document which eliath heareth okay so scroll down yep there here's the problem so persistent world but I did that already. So now I could, you could oh, take that's out right. the red. That's right. So let's, let's get rid of this. Delete. Yes. Okay. So let's go. Good. And now we go down to where slow, you're. Go slow. No, no, no. Cause I have to, do you have any questions? Okay. Oh, that's, that's right. I'm good to stay in touch. Good. Okay. So we're missing, begin okay, to compare so notes. You could see the coin drop and they're like, you know, and that's top it, pop, put it in there. So right there. And then uh, let's just make no. it the same size. Yeah, please. This is all, this is all okay. 12. You can, that was the other thing. You I had can to command like, Z oh. and uh, do shift. Um, paste shift, without formatting? Command paste, yeah. So command. Shift, shift uh, command V. Shift command V. Uh, uh, you've got a fancy helper. I do. I have the, yeah. Let me just, let me just reformat it to the usual font size. Well. Yep. Calibri. Well, done. <laughs> yeah, you just okay. move it over though, because you see how the margins are different. Because um, I was moving it over so, by hand. <laughs> so the margin, the margins are actually funny uh, all throughout, and there's a, a space here. But the margins are funny throughout. When you were done, I was gonna yeah. sit. I was gonna sit down and remove formatting, 
uh, and, and go add in, add in formatting and stuff like that. So, oh, good. All right. Yeah. So I was doing it by hand. Okay, yeah. good. I don't, don't, don't worry about that. Okay. Uh, just worry about what the text says. Uh, and so here's, you can see the coin drop. Here's, you can see the coin drop. We're good. And then you can match it up again. Stop. Let me make sure we have everything. Yeah. And so, but unfortunately, they don't cross. Thank you. My friend's in. That's pretty close to. Okay. Sweet. Thank you. Sweet. Thank you. That's great. <clears throat> All right. Um, any other weaving the world ops things we should talk about right this minute? I still have to go back to Jesse and finish the descript. I haven't done that, but I'm uh, I'm on track to do that. I'm just getting distracted by Picturey's brain and now story threading and all that kind of thing. Um, so one thing that occurs to me is that. Um, the current model is to do original episodes, which creates this production thing that we're sort of in the middle of right now. Um, another way of looking at this is to occasionally do original calls where there's a need or an opportunity or something really interesting to do, but that otherwise to go find a brilliant interview and there's a hefty crop of brilliant podcasts and other sorts of things already happening in the world, some of which have a beautiful transcript sitting on a website already, and then to just go weave those. And to go go say, hey, here's our digest of that, and then offer that back to the original authors, and then put that in, you know, connect that into the big fungus. But to make to make the weaving act, the weaving party, an episode, um, and I don't know how that's going to look. I, we haven't really done a weaving party yet, um, so I think that's that's an important next step is to figure out like, are weaving parties episodable? Um, um, with what would what would happen in a weaving party? So, in so a that weaving, would, I think that would be post corrected transcript, right? Yes. So there's a clean transcript, and and potentially it's somebody else's transcript that we're just coming into, and we ask. So let's pretend that we're doing. So we're, let's pretend we're doing. Please hold. Uh, sitting in my browser now for way too long is this nice long interview of Schmachtenberger by Jim Rutt. Right. Uh, unfortunately, two white guys, so I'd probably pick something else. But uh, this is, uh, you know, a, a very nicely transcribed uh, episode that's really interesting. That's something I'd like to sort of go into and look at. So let's pretend it's this one. Uh, so then we invite, we make a, a broad invite and see who would like to come in and, le you know, learn how to uh, weave in the sense that we're talking about here. Um, bringing whatever tools they feel like. If it's a Miro board that they want to use to map this, if they want to use um, Mind Manager or whatever. Um, uh, and, and then we show up and we start comparing notes. We basically talk about, we then, we then slow down the dialogue and focus on different areas and share what we know about it, uh, create artifacts ourselves, share, screen share those in, and then keep going. Um, and beyond that, I'm not sure. Um, when you say create artifacts, it, it would be into the mind mapper or the or into procreate or whatever you're or drawing. Ro that's or Rome research or yeah. Uh, or so scrap I, or scap scapel or like like whatever whatever the mapper the weaver wants to use, whatever their loom is, right? They show up and use that. And and if Marc Antoine had a working idea loom. He would show up with idea and say, "Well, here's the claim that was made at this point." I mean, that would be really beautiful, right? But I think that's ahead of where he is now. But that's the idea: is that is that his axe is different from and complementary to the other the other tools that we're busy using. Um, so the so where where I kind of think through that, it's it's fun if everybody shows up with with whatever axe that they're used to. Um, I'm not sure that that's very episode episodable. Um, I think what is episodable is once you have a couple people who can cooperate. Um, so maybe you've got somebody who's drawing stuff on Procreate, and maybe you've got somebody um, who's um, editing in Obsidian, um, right. and they work together, right? Rather than um, 
rather than everybody kind of gets to do whatever they want and you see what happens and it's kind of interesting but mostly fun for the participants right um yeah, yeah. If, well, so so the early going you're saying would be sort of too messy and dis disparate and disjointed but if we could find a couple of people who are kind of grooving together with different tools where you can see that there's a fit and where it starts to make sense that's probably interesting enough to episode yep is that sort of a good preference yep and I think uh, I think the way it works is you start off with the you know the raw artifact um, transcript or transcript and video or whatever, um, and maybe some clip art and maybe a a, a a framework of a wiki or something like that already there, and then you watch the whole team, um, the the artisans and the facilitators and whatever walking through the the whole script it's like okay this part is interesting but we don't really need to thread it here's a part that we need to thread let's take this paragraph and turn it into you know the so then the wiki person says this would be great if there were a couple stick figures you know enacting what what's in this paragraph and i'll grab these links and you know and that that's the interesting part i think when oh, oh, you see oh. the, the meat of it or for example, um, in Wendy Elford's conversation about uh, water rights in Australia, when some piece of the conversation starts, uh, Gene Bellinger could show up and say, well, here's a, here's a Kumu systems flow diagram of yep. the water complex and the issues around it. Yep. And, then, and then we could use that as a durable artifact for the rest of the conversation, in fact, the chain of conversations, right? So, so that becomes a, a nice durable thing. And I'm wondering like, you can't really annotate Kumu. You can't really like draw on top of it. But if we took a snapshot of the Kumu and dropped it into Procreate or dropped it into something else, then interesting things start to happen. Although you then get out of sync with the uh, with the with the, well, the live diagram. But but I'm trying to think of things like that where mm -hmm. where we're using each tool and each craft person for like what they do really 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 well, and then fit it back into the mix so that it becomes this this useful elaboration this isn't this isn't just and now the bassist has a solo this isn't just like the jazz quartet you know doing its thing it, it's actually trying to shift to the tool that makes the most sense in those different parts of the conversation yep. uh, so that would be really cool it could also be that we record the messy parts and the original parts first just to have them so so stacy was asking me earlier before you got on the call did uh did Emma Schmidt and I record our early conversations after each after having watched each episode? And we didn't. We recorded a jam at the end and we published that, but we didn't record our early ones. And it could be that we record the whole things and then we say, hey, the conversation gets really juicy starting at this marker, right? And then, any, every, hey, everybody start here. But for anybody who wants to, you can scroll back and see the messy parts when we were setting the table up or whatever. Yep. Um, that wouldn't be terrible. And, and for mysterious reasons, super long form media seems to be popular again. I mean, Clubhouse it has these marathons, uh, long, I look at podcasts and they're like two and a half hours long. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, somebody's, somebody's, and somebody's out there listening to these things. So, so, um, and again, if we have in and out points that are really interesting and, and if we do this really well, the transcript of the call has markers, pointers, you know, a, a, a basically a, a directory in and other pointers in so that you could just go watch 15 minutes of it right and those 15 minutes would have at hand the kumu map that was in conversation for the whole session like like whatever the best resources are uh, at that stretch i'm not exactly sure how to do that i'm just sort of imagining that so my um they're at least on the wiki page that has the contents uh my guess uh is there's two modalities of of listening to something one of them is hey i'm in the car and it's two hours and 15 minutes i'm going to listen to the whole freaking thing yeah um and then another one is i i want to see the curated view of this i want to see the 20 minutes that really matters to me and i'll just sit and watch the whole thing my guess is that the intersection of those the the one where you say oh we have this curated view but you can also expand it into the whole thing and my guess is that's a, a real niche thing that that most people wouldn't do so they either they either want the well curated 
edited version, right. you know, show me the highlights or they're, they're going to listen to the whole thing because it's kind of background for them. Are you, are you also saying that it's hard, difficult if, or impossible to do both in one recording or one production, or are you just saying that those audiences don't overlap? That's where I was going with it. Yeah. So for both of those people, it's, I, I, I'm guessing it's fire and forget. It's essentially not interactive to, yeah. to them, right? No, there's a so, bunch of people that are just going to listen to a whole big thing. But, and but and it, then there are other people who want the highlights. Right. Um, but, but even those people, so, so I'm more one of those people. Yeah. Um, what I, I, I'm not really, just format wise, right? I don't want to have any, um, uh, for both people, kind of, you don't want to have any like overhead on your use case, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like if there's any friction due to the fact that I could actually expand the whole thing and listen to the whole thing, any friction, right? It's like I'm not interested. Um, and which means maybe um, so, so you, you can produce. I, I'm, so the the yeah. argument I think I make is you just produce both and and not even support the the intersection use case. And yes, but also there could be like a non-destructive cropping way of doing it. So you know how sometimes you put an image into something and you crop it down and then, and yet it's, it's all right there and you know, it's there, but it doesn't show in the finished product. Yeah. So the, here, the so script here, works that way. Exactly. Exactly. So it's got the source and then you can make whatever mixes you want out of it. Bingo. Um, but you could do that here so that for the person who only wants this seven minute snippet, they only in fact see an artifact that looks like a seven minute snippet, but it's the same production behind the curtain. What I, what I think I would do um, sociologically is publish the, the short version, publish the long version, and the people who are interested in the the whole, you know, I want I want to see the the source code. Basically, it's like welcome into the crew. <laughs> you get to be a volunteer, and um, you get access to all the source code we have. And um, yeah, and instead of letting those people be audience members, you say, let's step you up, and you're you're going to be a participant in our you know, our editorial process. So I agree with that. And there's this, there's another small issue here, which is, um, which I think you're a fan of, of, let's make lots of copies. Let's, let's, let's let, let's let the copies proliferate. And I'm really interested in links to a topic coming, converging back toward the same general place, just to use a really broad word. And, and if the place meant that there were 12 different copies, but they were related and you could find links into that, that's fine with me. But when somebody's talking about neighborhood economics, I'd love for that to converge rather than splinter into, because because if you loved the seven minute episode that you were looking at and tagged it up and wove it into the world, and that wasn't detectable or viewable from the raw whole episode, that's, yeah. a, big, that's a big loss for me. That's a big loss for me. I, I, I want, I want, all good annotations and not all the crappy ones, haha. Uh, but I want all good improvements to the work to show up at the canonical version of the work somehow. And so, and so when I make available the raw footage of the Daryl Davis interview, for example, and then we produce it and then publish that again somewhere else, somebody pointing to the same damned words is going to be pointing to two different versions of, of the video. Yeah. And that and that irks me yeah. because I kind of I want convergence of the conversation somehow, and I don't know how to solve that. Um, that um, I don't know how to do that in video and audio, but that that's the thing that you're looking for. So the thing that I'm looking for is to control the process of, or or to coordinate to coordinate the process of of making remixes and edits and stuff like that, right? Um, so if if you just like dump everything out in the open, people end up like, okay, I'll take this part and I'll move it away from the comments, right? right. And not even necessarily because they want to enclose it, just because it's like, well, it's easier if I'm working on it I'll, over here. I'll make, I'll make my own copy to go work on it for a while. Yeah, it's, it's so, pull. Um, so the GitHub model has gotten around that because um, if I go to a project and I want to do a remix, I click the fork button, it's it's easier to keep it in GitHub than it is to enclose it or even accidentally enclose it someplace else, right? Right. So 
GitHub keeps track of the forks and you can go to a project and you can look at all the forks that have been made um, and almost all of them will be trivial or bad. Um, but you can at least keep track of them all right and then it's it's easy for everybody to say okay this one has improved, but they haven't picked up the improvements from the, the, the base source code or and there's a, a management process where you can tell where the projects have gone after they've forked and you can also uh, re-centralize them whenever you want. Um, so Stacy, just um, to catch you up in case you haven't used GitHub and programmed on it yet. Um, so, so GitHub has repos or repositories and it's mostly open source code on GitHub. So what happens is I find a project that Pete posted some code on in a repo on GitHub. I then fork his repo, which means I make a complete copy of his code and it shows up in, in my GitHub and I can go work on it. And then I, I'm like, ooh, I fixed a problem. I found a bug and fixed a problem. I then submit a pull request to Pete and Pete can, can go, yep, love it or nope, forget about it. And if he says, yep, yep, love it, then my improvement to his code gets added to his main line of code. And that's really good because it means that a community can go like like little ants can go make copies for free like a full copy of everything for free is, is like available for you to just mess with you can break it you can do whatever and then you submit um, fixes or improvements and you could do this with a book you could sort of crowdsource a book by saying here's here's the draft of the first chapters submit improvements to sentences or paragraphs within the book so the model works for lots of different things and here we're sort of proposing what if that model worked? Because, because what you just said, I totally agree with, except if you don't have a pull request mechanism, then it's only up to somebody to follow all the forks and you don't know which were the good forks and which were the bad forks. And it's that feedback loop of somebody with judgment saying, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, that that's telling us which are the good bits. And incorporating the good bits into the finished uh, main line is brilliant. Like, like that's fantastic because that process allows for the fragmentation and then the reconstitution of the main the main line and i like that a lot so i think we're sort of saying that fork and pull will solve some of this problem yeah fork and pull and and the attendant kind of centralization of yeah. of uh, the workplace right uh, well fork and pull doesn't mean there couldn't be then three or four major different forks of the same work which split according to near yeah, github but they would all they would all be on GitHub uh, unless we go to GitLab unless we go to IPFS under well, or, GitHub or wherever or you are. Um, the yeah one of the the features of it is whether it's GitHub or GitLab or or a Bitbucket or whatever. Once you know once the source code is living there, it and especially once a fork and pull model is going, it behooves everyone to just keep it in the same centralized place, the centralized host hosting service. Yeah. Cool. If, if I'm understanding this right. Yes. And, when, and you know, moving it to like conversations though, I, I would want to see, it would be interesting to see those things that were rejected. I think that would be really interesting. It, yeah, and, and um, it, it's a that's a really good, uh, really good observation, um, and um, and it gets super fine grained. Um, so if I'm looking at a pull request from somebody, um, GitHub shows me all the differences, um, GitHub or whatever, show me shows me all the differences, and I can say I like this one, I like this one, this one. I'm going to write a comment to them. I'm going to start a whole comment thread about this is great, but you know, you didn't follow the coding standard, or um, I only want half of this, I, the other half is junk or whatever. And then I reject this one, uh, accept this one. So not only do you see accept rejects, you also can do fine grained uh, conversation around any of the changes or all of the changes. Um, and then, then there's another thing, branching, which you can have kind of, um, you know, uh, uh, as a as somebody who wants to modify stuff, it it isn't ne necessarily that I'd modify um, everything and and offer it back. I might say, um, here's where I modified the last half of chapter one, and this this is another thing where I did a different modification of of the last half of chapter one, where I 
um, corrected all the you know uh, British spellings into American spellings or vice versa or whatever, right? So I can have two different or multiple different copies of things that I, I have done differently. And so the, the maintainer might go, I love what you did here. This one, thanks for trying it. It didn't work. Um, what we'll keep going on this kind of kind of change. And all of that stuff can be done kind of just easily and simply. So okay. why why I'm excited about massive wiki and get, except we're not anywhere near any of that. <laughs> Someday I, we will be, but not yet. Well, cool. Um, we've gone past our, our hour. This has been super useful. Um, Stacy, we fixed the transcript a little bit. Take care of that. So you're you're free to roam. Um, anything else? Good for now. See you both on the inner tubes. Cheers. Thanks.